generally welcome. So, Mike, now we, has everyone come enter the room? Okay, so since it's, um, hi Bernd. Hi Pia. Uh, welcome everyone, and I think we will start out uh, with this uh, flipped um, IRSPBL 2021 series of webinars. My name is um, Pia Böhler, and uh, I will be moderating this session. And uh, we have uh, two presentations. Um, one is done by Fernando Dicas, and the other is done by Vincenzo Liso. Uh, and um, the very interesting and very um, uh, challenging uh, subject we have here is today is about um, frustrating and complex processes. So um, when we have a problem solving and project management, um, one of the uh, interesting issues is that when you learn, uh, there needs, you get frustrated and the need to get a balance between um, the frustration and learning and too much frustration. I don't, is there an echo on what I'm saying or? Okay, so I don't know how I will actually, what is, it has it gone? Yes, it's gone now. Yeah, it's gone. Okay. <laughs> Perhaps I will, uh, you know, move a little bit away from the, the microphone and it, it will be better. Is it, is it okay now? Okay. Yeah. So we have two examples today uh, um, that will address the balance between uh, just enough frustration, too much And uh, one issue of project information. I'm sorry about this echo. I don't, I'm, I'm not sure what to do about it, actually. Um, no. You will cope with it. So that's, that's one of the frustrating things of this session. Um, so the the other example we have is coping with challenges during the, the writing process. And um, I will invite that uh, questions and comments are written in, uh, in the chat room. Uh, and um, after the two presentations, we will take uh, the two presentations first. Uh, so after them, we will have a plenum discussion and we will start out by a, uh, having a panel of the two presenters. Uh, and, and any uh, questions are welcome there. And uh, I'll also invite the, the speakers to comment on each other's. Uh, I think I will keep this introduction very brief. Uh, and just uh, go ahead and um, introduce the first presenter. Uh, so the first presentation has the title, the information management impacts when students configure the project work and it's presented by Fernando Rodriguez. And Fernando is from the Universidad, uh, University National of Colombia. Um, so uh, Fernando, please go ahead. Hello, my name is Fernando Rodriguez. I am teach and mechanical engineering at Universidad Nacional de Colombia. We have made this work together with Klaus Monrad, who teach at Olbord University. The study was in Olbord with a student of energy from the first semester. The students come from several backgrounds with less or more expertise in a subject. In project work, students have to solve an engineering problem in a specific area of knowledge. The problem usually comes from a real situation. This problem often are complicated for the student due to lacking knowledge and experience in the subject area. 
To solve a problem or project while learning, students have to collect information from many sources. Information management or behavior information addresses the ways that an individual moves from uncertainty to certainty. The project work that stages are mostly from problem identification, then problem definition to problem resolution to a solution statement that is the product outcome. The purpose of this work was to understand how students deal with information. So we interview 16 students from an introductory course with open question, follow students' answer. We record an average of 30 minutes in each one. Then we transcript verbatim and analyze it by thematic analysis using in view. Findings. The analysis identify and group some clusters. Information produce conflicts according to the interviews. So those branches should address in curriculum, project formulation or facilitation to improve project work. On the top, spending time showing whose all of these activities are time consuming. Implication for project work. To reduce conflicts and move to less uncertainty, since the information management is in a conflict zone for the students, the students have to acquire skills to search, acquire subject knowledge. That is very important in design PVL practices. Also, the students should be aware of the consequences of misunderstanding information and avoid things like mismoral. For the supervisor's side, they should think about their responsibility with the information, like content or procedural knowledge that they give or that the student have to seek. It is about the role of facilitation. Simultaneously, they should monitor the student information during the project work, promoting reflection. Thank you. Okay, I can hear you. It might help if I unmute myself. Can you hear, can everybody hear my, me now? And is it without an echo? Yes. Good, then uh, mission accomplished. Um, thank you, uh, Fernando. So uh, let's uh, proceed with the uh, second presentation, uh, which has the title, Issues and Practical Solutions in Project Groups, Writing in the PBL Education. Uh, and it's presented by Vincenzo Liso uh, from Albo University. You can see my screen? Yes. Yes. Okay, hi, uh, this is uh, Vincenzo Liso from uh, the Department of Energy Technology, Arbog University. Um, I'm uh, under uh, an engineering, uh, the engineering faculty. So in um, uh, the, uh, the title of the presentation is Issues and uh, Practical Solution uh, in the context of uh, problem-based learning uh, for uh, project group writing. So in, um, in the current scenario, uh, universities are trying to promote research-based methods for education. Uh, in this context, context, students have to read the scientific literature. Um, additionally, in the PBL context, students are asked to uh, write a project and um, uh, this uh, put them a uh, burden to learn how to write a report uh, to document the uh, project. There are different uh, ways to write a project. One of the uh, most uh, accredited form is the IMRAD or IMRAD format, which stands for Introduction Method Results and Method Format, which is used in uh, engineering, but also other uh, um, faculties like medicine, for instance. 
um, this format is a is a, a format that we is used also in the scientific literature, and uh, the hypothesis uh, is that it could uh, also um, help students to uh, formulate better the uh, problem and uh, and to um, uh, um, structure the learnings. Uh, during writing uh, their projects, students go through different uh, mistakes uh, and past and pitfalls uh, that, in many cases, are uh, always uh, the same. Uh, the same across groups. So something can be done in order to avoid these uh, uh, mistakes. Uh, when uh, in the academia there are um, uh, some uh, dilemmas that students have to go through when they start writing. They have, they, they usually they they base their uh, uh, knowledge on uh, on the um, uh, uh, previous experience. But in the academia, they cannot use, just use their previous experience. They also have to use theories and books, uh, and they re refer to them. So uh, on the other hand, they have to use these theories, but still they have to come up with some uh, original uh, content, and. Um, while they 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 read so much uh, information, they also need to come with their own voice and develop their own uh, understanding and write uh, some original uh, ideas. This is uh, uh, a lot of uh, cognitive uh, load on them. So um, how can uh, uh, I can uh, we help? To, I can help the students in uh, writing uh, the report. Usually in the PBL uh, format. Um, the, the structure that uh, the students have to write when they, they write the report is it's very uh, simple. It, it, it doesn't have um, much uh, 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 indications, clear indications. Usually we have an, an introduction and an analysis phases and, and a conclusion. Whereas in the, uh, in the other format, the, the IMRAD format, we have a more clear distinction across the different uh, sections. So, with uh, with uh, each section, there is a specific content that they should have. So here, the hypothesis is that having a, a more clear direction of what students could, should uh, have, write in each section can help them structure their problem. Also, this um, this format has the advantage, uh, the IMRAD format, that um, it reflects uh, the the project phases. So as we can see in this uh, figure. So if we uh, consider like the uh, sections of the Emerald format in the last uh, uh, line, we can see that these are aligned with the project phases. So in the introduction, we, we do the initial work and uh, then we go through the, the phases all the way to the conclusion. Um, and these are also um, aligned with the problem solving phases where the introduction we try to approach the problem and the conclusion we try to uh, finalize the problem but uh, okay the next as i will uh, go quite quickly we can see that in each of these uh, sections students go through same um, some common mistakes like for instance in the abstract which is uh, the summary of uh, the report it might, they might miss uh, to write clear conclusion and they might provide a, may, might use all of the space for just providing background information. Or, um, uh, yeah, going back to, for instance, to the discussion, in uh, my experience, I've seen that the, the students can uh, uh, jump this uh, phase uh, straight off uh, completely. Uh, and um, and this is because um, they they miss uh, to critically think about how can you, all the results that they have achieved can be combined uh, together. So they they might uh, write the single uh, results, but they can uh, skip uh, the to evaluate what are the overall um, uh, results from, from the report. There are uh, more uh, pitfalls that I've. Uh, uh, listed in the paper based on my experience. Um, so in, in this case, um, having a, um, uh, a clear um, distinction of each phases and what is the contact of, of each of, um, section, this is provided in, uh, in the IMRAD format, can uh, help them and uh, 
in the right process and uh, and provide a more explicit uh, direction to them um, so at this uh, uh, to conclude this uh, presentation uh, the question that I, I I give to you is it uh, do you think that uh, there, what is what is the positive and negative consequences of uh, providing providing more explicit uh, guidance in uh, during the uh, the writing process with the students? And if you believe or if you think that this uh, format and uh, standard format can enhance student learning, thank you for your attention. I just have to unmute myself each time. Thank you very much, uh, yeah. Vincenzo. Uh, and also for this uh, very interesting questions uh, for our common discussion uh, um, here. Um, so this, this is where I actually will invite um, everyone uh, to participate. Uh, and um, um, so um, first of all, um, Anyone who has um, would like to comment on this or have questions uh, that have been raised um, on the grounds of the two presentations that we've had? Because otherwise I would like to hear. Um, so, um, I was a little uh, uh, preoccupied with finding another way to communicate with you during the first uh, presentation, Fernando. But so maybe I missed this, and you actually uh, did go through it. But um, have you? How did you? Um, did you interview students about this, or what? So, uh, what are the biggest uh, frustrations that the students have when they collect information? Yes, when, when I be, become the interviews, the main interest in asking the students was about uh, their culture. So I designed a questionnaire. We question about the uh, behavior, in general behavior. But after the first interview that it, uh, happened in, in Orbo, um, I realized that they uh, say uh, a lot of time that they spend a lot of time collecting information. Mm -hmm. And it was uh, for them very frustrating when they begin the, the project. And they are from an introductory course. And then they say in, in many times that they have conflicts with them about the information. So I, um, my uh, questionnaire was open. So mm -hmm. I, I made the, the questions. We, uh, we question relative to the information. Okay. Then, um, uh, uh, for the student is too much time. Uh, they spend too much time collecting information they may, mm -hmm. maybe half of the semester they have a lot of information. It means that, for example, she, if uh, they design a schedule from the beginning to the end of the project, in the middle of time, uh, they have to organize information and for the project. Mm -hmm. So it's uh, have a lot of impact in the project outcome. All right. So I, I, after that, I did the interview, that was 30 minutes for each one. Uh, I did this uh, analysis with, with in vivo. And, okay. And code it. So, Fernando, um, so right now I'm thinking, so it, it also makes sense to me from the experience that I have as a supervisor that, 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 that there is a lot of a, a frustration involved in, in collecting uh, the information uh, and uh, for the students. So, and I know that we have a, a bunch of uh, supervisors here, so they are probably familiar with this uh, situation. So maybe I can ask both you and perhaps also Vincentio and the rest of the, the participants here. So what 
can we do as uh, um, supervisors to um, to help our students uh, navigate this uh, challenge? I, I have a question to Fernando. Yeah. When you say information, what information exactly you uh, you mean? It's, a, uh, it's about the, uh, all information that I need to extend the problem for the project and the information to uh, acquire knowledge about the subject that everyone wants to teach. For example, if um, you have a project of um, uh, electrical circuit to design, they have to collect information about the electrical circuits, about the cables, about the uh, uh, power. Uh, that is the information that they need to uh, formulate the project or formulate the problem. And during the project, they have to framework the problem. They have to collect more, more information. That it means data, data for the project. To, to feed the project. Okay. Sorry, I, I didn't want to interrupt uh, Pierre's no. question, but it was, it was just a clarification. <laughs> it's, uh, <laughs> it's quite okay, uh, Vincenzo, but, but maybe you have then a uh, suggestion or some reflections on, so how do we as uh, supervisors um, yeah. help our students yeah. uh, navigate this uh, process because there, there are so many data out there. There, so so to find, uh, to uh, to gather what's most important and, and and to to make the best use of it. That that's a, a challenge that every group is is uh, is faced with, right? Yeah. So, yeah. So yeah, I think I think that uh, um, the first part of the project, uh, at least uh, for my experience, is the one that requires uh, the most amount of time, or at least. Uh, mm -hmm. In the beginning, the supervisor has to put the most amount of focus, providing uh, the relevant uh, literature. Mm. And uh, for instance, in case of it is a lab, lab activity, providing uh, the, uh, all the information required to access uh, to the lab, for instance. But it, it's very important uh, to, uh, yeah, to give a clear indication or, or of uh, the uh, literature that is already available in the beginning. Mm. Of the project and uh, so so that's yeah, very that's, much that's, sorry yeah please sorry yeah yeah otherwise, I, otherwise uh, the students have this kind of uh, feeling lost yeah and and then drawing from your presentation where it's it's kind of to me at least uh, the underlying sense is that uh it's a good thing to um structure things for the students and give them very clear advice about what to do yeah. in order uh, not to have people uh, or students uh, groups becoming too frustrated. At the same time, I know that there's also this um, um, perspective uh, flourishing at least here at this university that we also have to give the students, you know, time to get frustrated so that they find, uh, uh, you know, their own paths and and, uh, and learn from their own frustration so that we don't take away too much opportunities for them to learn. And, and I see at least uh, um, a bunch of supervisors here that probably is, is, is used to serving this, uh, uh, this tricky situation. So uh, anyone who has anything to team in on and, and we can learn from? I can start. <clears throat> yeah, that would name, be nice, Brent. Yeah, my name is Bernd. I, I have a history at Aalborg University and I'm still a bit active there, but not in teaching. I am from the University of Flensburg, just south of the border. Um, we have an international program. I also have two colleagues here, uh, Wolf and, and Maria, uh, who, uh, in our experience, I think, is that students come with the expectation, of course, to, to do well. 
in in the group work that we also induce in our in our program, and they are very much centered on the on the outcomes, right, on making the supervisors mm -hmm. happy, right, and that that leads them to actually choosing the the fast lane, right. So there's often a very less critical approach to finding good sources of data, of information, and so on. And of course, we also have internet over here. But right? the, the thing is, um, how, can we, how can we teach them to be critical? How can we teach them to, to organize data by value, by credibility, and by applicability in the project? The those are very good uh, questions, Bernd. Uh, and I would be very interested to hear if you have some reflections on how to, how do we approach that? Because I really think that you're spot on, uh, and and this is what emerges from this theme, right? That that there are some reasons uh, why students would try to avoid the frustration of learning, and at the same time, we as supervisors know that that if if we want our students to learn something new, then we have to send them out where they are where they's a little deep. Where they cannot uh, uh, orientate themselves well uh, for a start, so it's 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 kind of this delicate balance. And then, what do we do as supervisors to either to push them out there or to draw them in again if it if it's too too much? Uh, but to me, it sounds as if you're saying that uh, basically most students would would want to go on the safe road rather than. Uh, uh, yeah, I mean, if, if they're not trained with with PBL from from the beginning of the of their bachelors, they they um, they they, um, they come from a system usually, um, uh, and all of them come from countries of the global south. But that is not a, a criterion to validate them. The the thing is, of course, they want to do well. They want to produce good results for the reports, and and somehow that leads to. Uh, to uh, avoiding risk in, in some time, in some mm -hmm. cases, in, in many cases, in fact. Mm -hmm. And even though we see the, the, the students who are willing to uh, enter the deep water to, in order to learn to swim, um, many also choose to say, oh, well, what is, what is most likely, right? And at the same time, because our students uh, all have uh, relevant work experience as engineers, they're also pretty straightforward thinking, right? They are sometimes a bit difficult to, to get off the track, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So does anyone in here have a, a very good example of um, when they actually succeeded in, in facilitating, a, a, or if not they as supervisors, but, but that they saw a group, you know, dealing with this kind of complexity and frustration and, and uh, that comes to mind that might be of general interest to this uh, crowd right now? Mm -hmm. Or is this uh, not very familiar to people in general? this challenge? Klaus. Uh, one of the, I'm also a teacher at Oldborg University. Uh, one of the sometimes a little silly approach is to ask several times, what's the problem? Mm -hmm. And direct the students thinking towards getting deeper into understanding what is the problem so that this is where they should direct their attention in their search for information. Um, kind of stepwise getting into things, a bit what Vincenzo is also uh, pointing to, that they are not in the beginning attempting to solve the problem, but they are attempting and Fernando had a figure also that these are these phases and this stepwise approach, I find is a useful one to hand over to the students, although they don't always appreciate it as much in the beginning as they will later on. 
but that's usually the problem with first year students that they need to get through the swamp before they appreciate to have some stepping stones and to know where the stepping stones are. Mm. So what you're saying here, Klaus, is actually also that there could be a difference between uh, the groups that we see at the first year and maybe later on. That, that, oh, yeah. would, that they would be more willing to dive into new areas uh, at later semesters. Yes, that's clearly my impression. And then they know, oh yeah, it takes time. Yes, we are going to be involved in this information search most of this semester mm -hmm. before we really have things together. Mm. But it's kind of, um, they're, they're building the road while they're walking it. Yes. Um, Fernanda, do you have anything to add on this in, in, in terms of what you've been studying? Yes, it's uh, in, in the first semester uh, when the student don't, doesn't have any experience in projects. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe if one, someone put a design problem, they have to begin with the problem. And they stick with the problem, all phases uh, during the group work or during the project work. But they sometimes think that the supervisors have to give everything to them. Uh, uh, this is a, a difference between with collect information from another people and other sources. And sometimes they, they want to the supervisor give everything for them. And one of the parts or one of the principle of PBL is that they have to formulate the problem. They have mm. to collect all that they need. So I think that the supervisor have to be very clear about uh, what to do. If give some information or if uh, the students are responsible of everything. Is it, is it that I have to say the, the question is how to do that, uh, how to make the students be conscious about that, to, uh, to, to keep their motivation high. This is mm. because, because you, you can down their motivation and it is uh, it have a lot of impact in the project if they they get they lost morale in the project yeah um i think it, it resonates very well with my with my own experience um as a supervisor that it's really really a delicate balance uh between um taking over the project and 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 giving room for the students and and when I can remember when from my younger years when I was more inexperienced as a supervisor, um, I would tend to um, stop them from being frustrated uh, earlier on than I do today, because it 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 also became uncomfortable for me uh, that that they were not um, on the right track. So it's it somehow became easier for me also as a supervisor to say, uh, let's hear a guy listen. Uh, if you go that way and if you do like that, it, it's it's gonna help you out. Uh, and later, so it's not only a question of, of how old the, the, the students are and how much experience it has. It's also my experience that uh, you as a supervisor um, has a say in, um, uh, how much frustration you're actually uh, willing to um, to witness, uh, and and uh, um, if if they are very frustrated, uh, you might you know be concerned that they will not uh, um, reach uh, the the goal line and and have a project and have a product. Uh, so uh, the the older I have become as a supervisor, the the more I can endure that that uh, students are frustrated, and uh, uh, and then I also have the security if, with myself as a supervisor that I will be able to pull them in on the right 
on a, a safe and, and, and right track again. Um, um, but this is really, so from my point of view, being a supervisor in a, a problem-based uh, learning uh, group project, it's, it's really much about uh, surfing this delicate balance of, of uh, how much will I uh, um, uh, witness and, and, and how much. And usually it's my experience that, that, that they can take um, a little more frustration than I can. <laughs> So I don't know what about the what about you? What do you think when I reflect on this? Vincenzo? Yeah, I think it's uh, it really uh, depends on uh, on the personal uh, relationship that the supervisor uh, managed to develop with uh, the students. Every supervisor has different uh, sensitivity, different uh, approach. So, some people can say, uh, some supervisor can say that uh, uh, I don't want to interfere with the, le the learnings of, uh, of the students, so I will provide minimum uh, guidance. Mm. Some other would be more attentive. <laughs> it's really um, difficult to, yeah, to, yeah, uh, as you said, is to um, to have a de definitive line of, of interaction between students and uh, supervisors. But maybe the what we could conclude is that regarding the structure, at least regarding the whole framework of the PBL. Supervisor should be very, uh, very explicit and uh, direct with the students. And for instance, uh, uh, Klaus said that we should uh, really put an emphasis on defining the problem uh, as much uh, as clearly as possible at the beginning, collecting uh, all uh, the relevant information. So on, on that part, we cannot uh, uh, skip. Like we we, are, we need to put focus. And uh, also, some uh, uh, my experience I've seen that uh, uh, could be that, uh, for instance, Danish students who have already uh, experience in the in this context, they they have a easier time compared to uh, uh, international students who come from a different uh, background, and they suddenly they have to to work in, uh, in this context where they have uh, less uh, structure, less guidance. So. In that case, we need more um, uh, attention. Mm. Um, so generally, the focus should be more. Um, uh, yeah, it should, uh, should the students should learn uh, uh, should be pushed to learn as much as possible. But on the structure, at least as a supervisor, we should provide. A, we should be explicit mm. <laughs> and uh, and tell them exactly what to do yeah. and where so, to put their emphasis. Yeah. I, I I really agree with you on that, Vincent. So that that's really the the okay. delicate matter. That and so in in that sense, it's very contextual uh, yeah, to, yeah. to to facilitate this because we want our students to uh, to learn as much as possible, and uh, at 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 the same time uh, they can they come up they show up with different um, um, uh, preparedness for that. <laughs> And, and so that's the delicacy of, of being a, a good facilitator. And that is, as we have established so far, it's it dependent on, on the group itself, of course, uh, on the semester, uh, on, on the, the supervisor, and also of what is the, the prior knowledge already of the, the, the students. And are there any, um, I come to think of um, a Canadian study that I, I heard of uh, in, in, in Canada, there is a university where they have, I think it's, it's the, the author's name is Vida, um, a, a, a Canadian university where they've had PBL for a very long time and he studied, okay, so um, how does it affect uh, the students? And, and he found that if students come from uh, uh, high schools and whatever, where they are not met with that as much, then it could be a tremendous uh, change going from one way of learning to this uh, very unstructured and self-directed learning mode. 
uh, which can cause actually a lot of stress uh, amongst uh, the students. Uh, uh, so uh, that inherit in the problem-based approach, it's not that everyone will uh, uh, find it very motivating and, 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 uh, and give way to good learning, that, that there really has to be this balance um, that, that the, 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 the single group is not overwhelmed with too much new that they have to take in. Um, and, and so in that sense, I think that the, that the supervisor actually have a um, key role in, in, in kind of having experience about this and knowing, okay, so how much um, frustration can I, can I put on my students? And, and maybe not even as a whole, but you know, maybe I would choose to go for the, um, um, the phase of information as you did, Fernando and your study did uh, and to see so how can we manage it here or maybe i would uh, rather em emphasize that it would sh it should be during the writing phase so that at in 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 some phases uh, it, it might be a good idea to structure more as a supervisor and then say okay in this phase i'm gonna l leave a lot of space to you uh, because i think that this is um, where you really want to um, uh, learn something and you can even have a discussion with the students about this. So where would you want more guidance or less guidance? Um, um, oh, now you disappeared. There you go. So that it's, um, it's, it's actually quite fascinating, this um, about uh, finding and, and striking the right balance. Uh, uh, and and it, it makes it uh, perhaps less rigid um, so when to to step in as a supervisor and when to withdraw as a supervisor is uh, so it's very much dependent on on the, the the specific context and group that you see in in front of you so um, yeah so we have um, maybe someone uh, would like to tune in as well and uh, if there's any questions then I don't want to sit on all of it <laughs> any reflections based on the discussion so far And uh, well, my inclination would be that if there is no more questions or uh, no more feedback and then that there are no, no more uh, comments back from uh, Vincenzo and Fernando that we uh, round up this session. And uh, I think that I also tried to, to kind of uh, give the highlights of, of some of the discussion points here. So um, what do you say, Mike? Should we round it up and, yes, I think and say thank you yeah. for now. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, I hope that um, everyone enjoyed. Uh, so thank you very much to the presenters and, and thank you for uh, participating and uh, hope to see you in some of the other um, discussions and uh, take care in this rather challenging time yeah. as well so thank you for now thank and you. bye 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 thank you bye thank you bye thank you making thank you bye 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 bye